drunk. This Karen from the Real Housewives, Huga, she can't control her liquor. That heifer couldn't control her liquor. She was driving like, you know, Tiffany Haddish and got a DUI. Karen, Karen Huga. This is all about the TR Fred. This is a headline. Karen Huga. In a high speed crash after a DUI arrest. Was alcohol involved? Again, question. Real Housewives of Potomac. Karen Huga was involved in a high speed crash, resulting in the total loss of her luxurious 2007 Maserati, according to the recent report. <laughs> Authorities from Montgomery County Police Department. And Maryland disclosed to TMZ that the incident occurred late Tuesday night. Karen, age 60, you old and a drunk, you senior citizen, was purportedly drinking in an aggressive manner, old drunk. Drink it. When the incident transpired, police detailed that Karen's vehicle collided with a median in a crosswork sign at an intersection before ultimately crashing into a parking sign off the roadway. Old, drunk, and can't see. Reportedly, her car came to a halt upon the final impact. While police did not provide specific details regarding the Bravo speed at the time of the incident, the spokesperson indicated that she had been traveling too fast for the conditions. The impact of the crash was substantial enough to trigger the deployment of the airbag in Karen's luxury vehicle. However, it remains unclear whether she sustained any injuries as a result. Notably, there were no passengers present in the car at the time of the incident, as reported by the outlet. The Maserati was reportedly severely damaged to the extent that it was rendered undrivable. The dispatch of a tow truck to remove it from the scene, a tow truck had to come tow it, the Miserati. <laughs> While Karen was not subject to arrest, TMZ reported she received multiple unspecified citations in the connection with the incident. In 2016, Karen confronted her past by addressing a DUI charge from a decade earlier during an interview. She disclosed the incident occurred while she was on her way home. Karen admitted guilt, subsequently received a sentence of probation. Karen recalled the incident explaining that she was arrested for drunk driving after enjoying a celebratory dinner and heading back to her home in Portamount, Maryland. Quote, I pulled over 
Amber, the mother of two, exclusively revealed to Bassa, technically, I wasn't driving. I was pulled over into a park area where you should not park. I turned off the car and I called my husband. However, the police officer found me first and I was charged with a DUI. Following the arrest, the reality TV star pleaded guilty to driving while impaired by alcohol and was subsequently placed on probation. Despite the setback, Karen, known for her adherence to eloquence and proper manners, refuses to let the incident define her. She views the experience as uh, uh, a, 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 a cash dated for personal growth. Quote, I said over, oh, wait. Quote, I said when I took on this project, I own everything about me that makes me, me. She remarked, quote, what makes me this woman people can look at. You have ups and downs, curves, the things in life. You still stand. I'm still standing. Yeah, you standing drunk. You drunk. Karen, you too old and got too much plastic surgery and Botox to be drinking. It is dangerous to be behind the wheel drinking impaired and driving. It reminded me of this black brother in Chicago. The city of Chicago got to spend millions to settle because a black teenager was injured from a car accident by the cops. And they supposedly were not drinking. Can you imagine you is an untrained driver and you like to drink and have celebratory events and you can't control your liquor, you drunk old drunk lady? How dare you get behind your wheel with that luxury vehicle that you still owe payments for and drink that cheap liquor and you ran it into something? What if you would have ran into me? What if you would have ran into an innocent bystander, a mother with children, a nurse, a food, a chef, a homeless person? You need to be in jail. Need to be in a sober house. Did you look at Wendy Williams' documentary? Having that alcoholic-induced dementia? You 60. Still trying to drink. You ain't in your 20s no more. You a foolish woman. And where's your weak husband? Where he at? How would you as the husband, the head of the house, allow this woman with that blonde wig to be drinking a Colt 45, Oh English, cheap Hennessy, great goose? Why didn't you stop her in the driveway and say, baby, you too drunk to be driving? And I got to say this. You supposed to be rich. Where's your driver? How you supposed to be worth all these millions and you ain't got no drama? When I was out in Dallas for Nate 702 birthday celebration, we was at the bar in Plano, Texas, and we had multiple bottles and I was drinking with multiple shots. I had common sense to know I need a sober driver, and my producer, while she was single, she decided to be the sober driver, and she drove me home, and she walked me to the car, and she made sure I pulled up to my apartment in my one room with the popcorn ceiling. She made sure Brother Wiley got home safe. I wasn't no fool. To be behind the wheel truck, I wouldn't have made it. And it reminded me of Nate 702. He was heavily under the influence. That brother was so drunk. He slept in the garage, the parking garage. He slept it off. 
And that's when he was able, the next day, hours in the next day, he was able to drive back to his house. But he had common sense. He wasn't no dummy like Karen. And that man is 30 years younger than Karen. He knew I'm too drunk to be driving. So I'm just going to sleep in this parking garage in my vehicle. And that brother is in his 30s. Here is Karen, old enough to be Brother Wiley, great-grandmother, decided to drive drunk. You ain't responsible. You too old to be that irresponsible. I understand a little bit if you was 26. You 60. Sit your old tail down. Learn how to be sober-minded. If you're going to be a drunk, be a drunk in your house. Be a drunk being the passenger of an Uber, a Lyft, on the city bus. But don't be no damn wicked, foolish woman driving drunk behind the wheel. Talk back to me in this chat. You could have put your life at risk and many innocent lives at risk in Maryland. You too old to be doing this. What you're going through a midlife crisis? You made it over being a half century old. Thank God you're about to hit into your 70s. You ain't young no more. Stop trying to look like it. Stop trying to act like it. You 60. You've been here for six decades. Thank God you're still here. Stop trying to keep up with the young folks. You in your 60s now. Sit down with your foolish self. I speak to your shame. Thank you, Malcolm, over for that $5 super chat. You 60. When you get 60, act like you got some common sense. You don't even need to act like you got, you should have it already. You got gray hair. 60. Where your husband, brother, been? Get your wife in check, weak man. Beta. I'm tired of you weak men got y'all wives acting crazy. The reason why they acting crazy is because they got weak men. Go on somewhere, eat some jello. Go on out there to a nursing home and do karaoke. Go on out there and be with the dementia patients paying bingo. Go read a book. Go, go net a sweater. You should be at no bar drinking at 60. And pissy drunk, you too old to be that pissy and drunk and paying, running to trees and sand. Need to be at home cooking for your husband a pot roast, butter dinner rolls from scratch, cornbread from scratch. Shouldn't be out there driving drunk. What you drinking for? Get you some therapy. Thank you to Monica from All About the Tea for putting that article out. I love her so much. I love her so much. Because she wrote a beautiful, her team wrote a beautiful article. I'm preaching. Thank you, Lala. Thank you so much, Lala. I felt that right now. Karen, you too old to be doing all that drink. Oh, Wiley, I feel like you you too hard on fall. Shut up! I could be hard on anybody I want to be hard on for.
You don't need to be doing all that drinking. I don't drink like that. And if I do, I'm at home. I'm taking an Uber. I'm on the bus. And Shabbat Abbas Shaddai. I'm on the bus. Ah, I will drink a little shot, but you ain't gonna see me drive it. You ain't gonna be seeing me out there driving drunk. First of all, I don't want my insurance to go up. Just like Bilal Grogram, oh, I'm talking about it. Here she is, a young, foolish woman. It was out there storming in Houston. Ice storm. She decided to go out there with Crocs and booty shorts. Eating, smoking, weed. She drove and slid off the road, caused a five-car head-on collision. And she went live. Malagro Grams. Went live. And she was smelling like Kush and Lyle. And the tow driver said, oh, man, you smell like weed. Oh, yes, you can still smell it. So she had to go on her purse and get some perfume, but you still was able to smell it. All that heavy weed. You so you supposed to be a mother. Didn't have no husband, no boyfriend. She just out there by herself. And she do all that kissing Nikki behind. Why could Nikki get her? You a car service, a driver. You supposed to be so rich and you want to smoke in a snowstorm. Go to a drug rehab. You addict. And got the audacity to cuss me out and you couldn't even drive on ice because you was impaired with marijuana. Don't make no sense. Did all that getting high, driving off the road, hit that innocent white woman. That white woman was mad at her business, listening to Frank Sinatra. She got her a nice cup of coffee. And here you are, dragging. In pair, and she slid off the road. And here we are, we got to deal with that because of your foolishness. Yes, I'm talking about you. You had no business out in Texas, high under the influence. Nice look, Karen, but she supposed to be a public figure, can't control her liquor. Her, Karen, Huga, and Milagro both need to be off the road. They can't, one can't control her weed, drug habit, the one can't control her liquor. Get them off the road. Put them in rehab. Get them off the road. Driving drunk. Driving. Putting 
your life at risk. So I'm talking today. I know y'all ain't ain't ready for this, but I got to do it. Isha, bye bye bye, da da. Andy, get her off the air. Put me on there. <clears throat> it's time for y'all to put a real man with a wig on anyway. Younger. Put Miss Netta on there then. At least she's sober. She got bumps on her face, but she's sober. Her face is bumpy, but I never seen Miss Netta out there sloppy jump. Slidding off the road. She got a bumpy face. But she ain't slidding off the road. That's what I'm saying. Don't play with me. I got to say it. The show have started, Kimberly. You're late. Just sit back and enjoy the show. And don't try to rush me. Because you ain't donate since 1954. You hear me, Kimberly? I hope you ain't drunk. You better not be driving. Because with that type of name, you in your 60s. You already know, Kimberly. You got you a masecto. I know you got one. You're drinking right now. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking. I like to drink a little bit, but I got to impress somebody when I'm trying to drink. You know, Lala, if you look good, I get up at the bar. Let me get two. What you like, baby? You know, I like I like Grey Goose shot. Oh, let me get two Grey Goose shots. I'm trying to impress you. Get a little drink. Get up. I was I, IEP. Yeah, I did have an IEP. But I know with having an IEP that you shouldn't D-R-U-N-K and D-R-I-V-I-N-G. Just because I got an IEP don't mean that I don't mean that I ain't got no common sense. That's government. That IEP ain't nothing for just getting a check for the school. My life. It's greatness. My life is awesomeness. My life is wealth. Here you are talking about IEP, but yet you watching W-I-L-E-Y. You don't love me. Send me a cash out and let me feel your love talking. And to then, keep your comments to yourself. When you get called out now, I love you. Shut up. Let me feel that love in a good old nasty cash out. PayPal. A nice sale. Make me smile when I head to the bar. Put an Uber in the lift. Thank you, Miss Terry. Now, 